All right, today we're gonna to talk about protection. Not that kind of protection. We're gonna talk about bike protection and what I chose to go with on my F800GS. I did things a little bit differently this time um, than what I did on my F700GS. And with the crash bars that I chose and the case covers that I went with and then also the bark busters, I'll go through all of those and show you why I chose those over some of the others and, and my thought process in doing that. All right, let's try this again. The wind up where I was was just too much to try to get any filming done. And so I uh, gave up on that spot and came to another place. I really enjoyed the view of that other place and I thought that would make a better video. So here we are. <clears throat> um, so we're talking protection on the F800GS. Now a couple of things I've added uh, to the bike are Outback Motor Tech crash bars. And I'll show you some of the details on those and why I chose those. And then also RNG uh, racing case covers. And then um, I went with Barkbuster handguards. I prefer the Barkbusters over anything else. And I'll talk about that too. So if this is something that interests you, stick around. I went with the RNG racing uh, engine covers because this bike, when it falls over, it goes flat. And my concern is, is in really, really rocky conditions. Rocks are everywhere. You can't predict what is gonna hit the side of the case. So I wanted to add some extra protection to the side case, just so I don't get any punctures or any anything hitting and damaging that part of the engine. The problem with that is because it wraps around the bottom of the engine, it, uh, it makes it difficult to put on a traditional uh, engine guard with the way they mount. There's two mounts under the, the uh, bottom of the engine and those usually mount in there but the Outback Motor Tech those mount differently they they mount in the traditional frame here on the side but then there's some points at the front of the engine where they have some tabs that mount on the front they don't mount on the bottom so that left plenty of clearance for my case covers which is exactly what I wanted that tab I was talking about is right here and then there's a mount on the front of the engine um, other engine guards I've seen don't use that. Um, they use the, the mounts um, down below the case. They use these mounts down here, and uh, there's two of them. So I wanted to go with the Outback Motor Tech uh, because of the, the way it mounts up. Everything is up high on it. It uh, protects the radiator, and um, I don't have to worry about making room around where the guards are. Um, I had purchased a different brand and it didn't quite fit right. There were some other reasons for that, but um, because these mounts down here, this case gets in the way. So now with the RNG case guards, um, I don't have to worry about modifying those to make sure that the uh, crash bars fit properly. So this is the left side crash bar. There's the tab and where it mounts on the engine and uh, not using the lower engine mount, so using these uppers. All right, if you're not familiar with Outback Motor Tech, they do some pretty interesting testing that you can find on their website or uh, if you uh, look them up on YouTube, you'll see how they're tossing bikes to the ground and dragging them and doing some, some pretty crazy stuff to make sure that their bars are going to work. So I feel confident these will do their job. And I've already tested these bars out uh, in a light fall in some mud. Um, an hour after installing them, I went out and ended up dropping the bike. I prefer bark busters. I like the aluminum uh, guard that goes around to protect the levers. I just recently learned that hand guards are as, as contentious as soft and hard luggage and also tire choices. I had no idea. I just thought everyone put something on to protect, uh, protect their levers in their hands. But apparently um, there's people concerned that these bars, the bark buster hand guards, transmit too much force into the handlebars when you uh, drop the bike. And so they prefer the plastic handguards. The one thing I can say about the plastic handguards is they are not engineered to absorb the impact of going down. So if you are dropping your bike hard enough to bend your bars, it's not gonna matter whether or not you have bark busters or you have plastic guards. Those bars are gonna bend because all of that force is getting transmitted into the end of the bar. So. I would prefer to have wonky bars even if I'm riding like this and know that I still have a brake lever and a clutch lever as opposed to having those snapped off and all the forces transmitted into the handlebars. That's just my opinion. Everybody has their own. 
Um, things I didn't have to add for protection was the Alt Rider skid plate. I already came with a skid plate. I keep using that. I see no reason to replace it. It's a, it's a good skid plate. And the other thing that, that came on the bike was the headlight guard. Um, I'm not so keen on the, uh, the grill, but since it's already on there, I'm not going to go to the effort of replacing uh, the grill or do anything different. Um, I've got plenty of other things to worry about. So I think from a protection standpoint, there's really not much more I can, I can do. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to ease the bike down to demonstrate how the uh, Outback Motor Tech uh, holds the bike up. I'm not sure if I want to do that right now. So um, yeah, that's where we're at. Dang, I started thinking about something else. All right. I want to give you an update on kind of where this series is going. Uh, the Baja and Beyond series is going to get split. Uh, I didn't do enough research when I started this series um, in understanding just how expensive it is to ship a bike uh, to Central Asia. I know there's ways to get bikes to Europe and uh, places a little bit closer. Air Canada has a great fly and ride uh, program that I may take advantage of in the future. But to get this, this bike here, to Central Asia and back would have cost me more than what it cost to buy the bike. I didn't realize that until after I had picked up the bike. Um, I still plan to go to Baja and, and do all that, so I'm gonna take this bike to, to do all that kind of riding, um, maybe get it to Europe. But the Central Asia piece, there's just no way that uh, it is financially feasible to get this bike over there. So I have some other options available to me that I'm looking at right now. So from a logistics standpoint, I'm working on uh, being able to ride next June in, uh, in Central Asia. So in January, I plan to start a series of Silk Off-Road Adventures um, or Silk Road Adventures, something, um, something like that, Central Asia Adventures, that talks about um, if you want to ride in Central Asia, here's how you do it. Here's how you go about um, getting a bike over there and the route that I'm going to take and some of the details and packing and flying over there and, and all of those details. So I'm going to split this series. Baja and Beyond is just going to become Baja getting the bike ready to go to Baja and then all of the details of going to Baja. It's not something I've done before. I've done a lot of research. I'm hoping that if anyone else is interested in going to Baja and maybe hasn't done their research, I can provide some information that will be helpful. Um, regarding insurance and then passes, uh, the permit to get to Baja, um, and things that to think about uh, before doing a trip like that, especially going international where you're crossing borders. Um, even though it's Mexico and Baja is, um, is like a, a very easy international destination to travel to. So that's where this series is going. In January, I'll pick up the Central Asia stuff, and then with uh, the Baja, we'll continue to work on getting the bike together. There's some exciting things happening to the bike. Um, as soon as I get back to the garage today, it's going to start coming apart. Um, we're doing springs and fork springs, and I'll talk about that in, in another episode. And then also, um, there's going to be some changes uh, coming up with uh, trying out tubeless and things like that. So um, there's still plenty to do to this bike to get it ready, as well as testing it out in the California Backcountry Discovery. Um, route which right now is scheduled in uh, just over two months so we're getting close uh, to giving that a go um, other things for the channel are uh, white rim I'll be doing that in about six weeks and then we'll just piece things together I've got a couple other small uh, video projects that I want to put together that, that I'm going to be using so we'll go from there I um, hope you're enjoying the uh, the series and if you have any comments please leave them below any thoughts anything I should consider on the bike um, maybe things that I didn't consider and uh, we'll go from there if you have any questions about where I got bits and pieces um, as we go through the series let me know and we'll work on it um, if you've been looking at the bike you'll probably notice there's a few changes already to the bike uh, from some previous episodes and that is uh, that is accurate I've already made quite a few changes to get it ready and have been putting quite a few off-road miles on this bike so thanks for watching and I will see you out there yeah